We'll give it a few more minutes for folks who might be rolling in a little bit late, but I'm so excited to see some people here, and he, I hope people have stories to tell. Come on. There's got to be somebody with stories to tell. You can tell other people's stories. I have, I have friend of a friend stories to tell. So, well, I guess kind of my friend, not friend of a friend. Welcome. Come on in. All right. Ghost story night. Mm -hmm. We'll give it a couple more minutes to see if folks arrive. Phyllis, I know you'll have to go first because you've got another party to get to. I have to, I have to go first. Well, I'll go first, but you'll go second. <laughs> You're not shy. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I hear we're competing with the big uh, Dave's Community Fitness Party tonight, so. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know Kaya? Kaya Winch, uh, Kaya oh, um, we we've met briefly. I, oh, okay. I I came in once to oh, be to do your show for like a minute or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I do the PSAs with with Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know what name I'm going by. So today, Kaya, but, Kaya, you yeah. know, so I said, oh, I'll check out that program. And I never see her when she walked in. I just about fainted. <laughs> <laughs> this one's a fun one. I, I expected last year we had a ton of people. I don't know if it's the weather or if we're getting too close to the holidays. But this year it's a little. But there are some cars pulling in. So we'll give yeah, people a few so more minutes. But um, uh, but last year was a blast. Was anyone here last year? I know Phyllis was. <laughs> <laughs> great stories and great local stories about the stagecoach, the stove flake, uh, the country club, right. Boston College. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Yeah, that's right. yes, yeah. yeah. So, so, uh, so it was it was great because it felt like it was like local history as well as uh, ghost stories. It was really fun. So, so you know, don't be shy. The camera can go off. At any moment. So if you if you are if you want to talk about something that you don't want recorded, that's okay. <laughs> we can that we in a moment's notice the camera can go off. So, um, but I, yeah. But last year I was really disappointed that we didn't record it because the stories were so good. I felt I was like, boy, I wish I had these saved. So so this year I thought we'd at least invite the camera and see if we we get um, something worth. Pre preserving. So I, I will start off with a folk tale, not a, not a true ghost story. But you're welcome to talk about anything. Um, but most people talked about their true ghost experiences last year, which was really interesting. So, um, And it's a good night for it. It's extremely dark out and has been dark, <laughs> solidly dark for two hours, it feels like. And a huge snowstorm is coming tomorrow. So get us into the mood. Hello, come on in. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> mm -hmm. Grab a seat. We're gonna give it a couple more minutes, just because I saw somebody walking this way. So we'll let them let them get here. Mm -hmm. Is everybody ghost believers? Ghost believers. That's yes. A great like, ghost believers. I always say. Do you have people say no to that? Show <laughs> <laughs> Not to this. I always. That probably has happened, like right? At least once. There you go. Yeah. I, I always they say. They look like other people. Yeah. I, I say that I, I don't know if I believe in ghosts, but I am afraid of them. So <laughs> definitely. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Scaredness. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. That's right. Hello. There's a lot out there. There's a lot out there we do not know. <laughs> yeah. Welcome. All right. This is great. All right. Um, so uh, I will get us started. I, I might give it another minute. It's just six o'clock now, um, but uh, I, this is this is so much fun. I love I love have, I love telling ghost stories. I love hearing ghost stories. Um, it's one of my favorite things. Uh, people in my book group, Phyllis, can attest that I always talk about some dark, disturbing book. <laughs> um, I'm, we we are in uh, the no pressure book group. Here is a book group where there's no assigned reading. You just talk about a book that you've read and enjoyed recently. So uh, so it's a very light book group. Um, so this is my favorite thing, and I love that it used to be a tradition in Victorian England to tell ghost stories at Christmas time. Uh, especially on Christmas Eve. Uh, it makes so much sense to me. It is the darkest time of the year. We're all gathered together. We're eating good food, having good drinks, sitting around a fire. So I'm trying to revive that tradition. So I've got my fire. We've got cookies. 
No drinks allowed. Well, you can drink water, but no no alcohol um, allowed in the library. Pass the cookies. Yes, <laughs> pass the cookies um, around. Very, uh, I don't know, what's the word? People are always shy to take shy. treats. Yes. So yes. I guess I'll, I'll just pass yeah. before you start, and you can always say no. Yeah. Oh, I just enjoy life. Thank you so much. They smell right. really I good. Right. Ones I will. I yeah. Judy did a good job picking out cookies. I made them all myself. Judy, oh, I forgot. I was gonna, Judy baked all these cookies this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, you can. I'll teach you. I will I will embellish a friend's ghost story very good tonight. <laughs> you definitely can. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so so as I was saying, I think that this is a very cool tradition and I'm trying to revive it. And I also feel like, you know, it's nice to have something different to do this time of year. We're all kind of overwhelmed with family and uh, holiday celebrations. And it's kind of nice to do something that's just for fun um, and just for you. And so I was like, oh, ghost story night. So this is my, my tradition and this is my second year doing it. And uh, I hope to do this many years while I'm here at Waterbury Public Library. Um, and my name's Rachel, I'm the library director, if you didn't know that. Um, and I am gonna kick it off with a story. And I'm not gonna tell you the title because I feel like the title gives it away, but it's an old folk tale from the Celtic Islands. Um, and I'll just jump right into it. One winter's evening, the sexton's wife was sitting by the fireside with her big black cat, Old Tom, on the other side, both half asleep and waiting for the master to come home. They waited and they waited, but still he didn't come, till at last he came rushing in, calling out, Who's Tommy Tildrum? in such a wild way that both his wife and his cat stared at him to know what was the matter. Why, what's the matter, said his wife, and why do you want to know who Tommy Tildrum is? Oh, I've had such an adventure. I was digging away at old Mr. Fordyce's grave when I suppose I must have dropped asleep and only woke up by hearing a cat's meow. Meow, said old Tom in answer. Yes, just like that. So I looked over the edge of the grave and what do you think I saw? Now, how can I tell, said the sexton's, sexton's wife. Why, nine black cats, all like our friend Tom here, all with a white spot on their chestices. And what do you think they were carrying? Why, a small coffin covered with a black velvet pal. And on the pal was a small coronet, all of gold. And at every third step they took, they cried all together, meow. Meow, said old Tom again. Yes, just like that, said the sexton. And as they came nearer and nearer to me, I could see them more distinctly because their eyes shone out with a sort of green light. Well, they all came towards me, eight of them carrying the coffin. And the biggest cat of all, walking in front of the, uh, for all the world, like, but look at our Tom, how he's looking at me. You'd think he knows what I'm saying. <laughs> go on, go on, said his wife. Never mind, old Tom. Well, as I was saying, they came toward me slowly and solemnly, and every third step crying out all together, meow. Meow, said old Tom again. Yes, just like that. Till they came and they stood right opposite Mr. Fordyce's grave, where I was when they all stood still and looked straight at me. I did bit, feel a bit queer, that I did. But look at old Tom, he's looking at me just like they did. Go on, go on, said his wife. Never mind, old Tom. Where was I? Oh, they stood still looking at me when the one that wasn't carrying the coffin came forward and staring straight at me, said to me, yes, I tell you, he said to me with a squeaky voice, tell Tom Tildrum that Tim Tildrum's dead. And that's why I asked you if you knew who Tom Tildrum was. For how can I tell Tom Tildrum Tim Tildrum's dead if I don't know who Tom Tildrum is? Look at old Tom, look at old Tom, screamed his wife. And well, he might look, for Tom was swelling, and Tom was staring, and at last Tom shrieked out, What? Old Tim dead? Then I'm king of the cats! And rushed up the chimney and was never more seen. <laughs> it's not really a ghost story, but I love it so much. I had to, to do it, and I thought that would be a good one to start off with, because it's fun. And um, floor is now open. And we do have a couple of plants if, we are having, if people are feeling shy, but I would love anybody who has a story to tell. It can be a real life experience. You can make it up on the spot. We won't know the difference. Please come up. Don't be shy. The camera can go off if you'd like. We, are, we love to hear your stories. Someone was first, right? Phyllis, do you have anything? Yeah, I'd like the camera off. Thank yeah, you. off. Yeah. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I, I would love to hear more stories about the state hospital because it is such an interesting place with such a difficult and challenging history that we have to wrestle with. But I actually, for years, I worked as the um, 
uh, as an archivist at the Vermont State Archives, right down the road in Middlesex. And um, this is not a creepy story, but it's kind of an amazing story. I was one of the two archivists who worked on transferring the historic records of the hospital into the archives, which we did literally two months before Irene. So just such a lucky, lucky thing. We had no way of knowing this was coming. Uh, but thankfully, we were able to preserve. These were the very early uh, ledgers and uh, registries and things like that, photographs, all kinds of records. Um, just, just pure coincidence and pure luck that we happened to be able to get those preserved at the State Archives before that happened. Um, I also was one of the uh, archivists who came to respond um, after Irene, and uh, we walked around the facility and, and down into the travel. Well, we couldn't go down into the tunnels because they were so full of mud, but uh, it really, the, none of those records would have made it if we, if we hadn't been able to do that, so that was pretty, pretty lucky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's, if you're in, if you've ever been in the state complex, when you get down into the basement areas, I don't know if the rooms down there were actually used with people, the stories they tell about what was in those five rooms. Well, the it's gone there. now, right. anyway. But mm -hmm. they were, when you walk through there, it was, because um, it's been a long time since This is something I'd like to bring up, though, because I'm hearing it a little bit here, and I connect with you, because, holiday theme. That's all right. I don't mind if the camera's on or not, mm -hmm. um, but this is something that happened to me and I have experiences with like spirit worlds or other realms. I'm really, I don't have a name for them. I'm not practiced at this, nothing like that. Just like these are my experiences. Um, we, we being my husband and I, were in Salem, Massachusetts Ooh. in September 2014. It was our first trip out to the East Coast. We're from California. Oh, wow. And it was like a big, you know, like our first vacation together as a couple. And it was a big deal. So my point being, we were taking a lot of pictures, okay? Mm -hmm. all Like we were there for two weeks. Pictures, videos, all kinds of stuff. So we knew our phones and our cameras were working. So on my husband's birthday, September 19th, which just so happens we learned on this night to be the anniversary of the death of the last person in the Salem witch trials, Giles Corey. And so we went on a witch walk that night and we ended up in the middle of the night at what is said to be the most haunted place in Salem, which is this now just a building, but was once a home originally and a two story home where upstairs a young girl had been quarantined because she was sick, whatever the nature of her illness was. And so her parents had quarantined her up there and that's where she was like writing out her sickness. And there was a fire and she died up there. And so over the years, I can't remember when this happened, but basically over the years, this building got passed off to the state and various entities until it became like a historic building because nobody really wanted anything to do with it. And so we ended this witch walk in the middle of the night on this fateful like anniversary night <laughs> that we did not plan for. It was just a vacation. And we're hearing the story about this. And the witch walk tour guide says, you know, take pictures like this ghost will sometimes appear and like your cameras might malfunction. And, you know, just this is a very interactive ghost. I'm paraphrasing, but something to that effect. And so, of course, we're like, wow, this is really cool. And it doesn't feel... Um, negative in any way. It just feels like something to be experienced. And so we get up there and we do go to take pictures and I have my picture. I brought it tonight oh, because oh, it was so cool. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I captured her on camera. Wow. Like you can see her in the window. Wow. And it was this like, I don't know. It felt very much like she trusted me or she felt safe with me or maybe she didn't feel scared anyways. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the situation was, but it was my husband's camera malfunctioned as, as well. He didn't get a picture of her, but he got some disturbance in his image that was not what was actually in front of us. There was no clouds or anything like that. Right. So anyways, um, this happened. We're like, these wow. cameras have been working this whole time. Like, whoa, this is really happening. And then as we're leaving this totally mind boggled, on the ground, I see a brooch and it has opals and rubies in it. It's like an old fashioned, wow. like, like from the Titanic era, mm -hmm. amazingly beautiful brooch. And I'm like, whoa, this is valuable. Like I go to the tour guide and I say, I just found this. 
It's the middle of a busy street in this area. It's the middle of the night, but like people have been walking around all the time. So it could have been someone that's there. I don't know. He's like, you should hang on to that. I'm like, what? Like, I don't, this is not mine. <laughs> His thing was basically that there was a reason that I found it because we had talked about the pictures and various people had had no experiences on their cameras and others had, and some didn't work at all. So a bunch of different things had happened and we had showed that I got a picture of her face. Wow. And he was like, you should keep that. So I decided to. I felt again that there was like some reason that I had interacted with her. And so I did, I took it home and I took it home. And then um, over the years, our lives changed and we moved to the East Coast. So we now live here in Waterbury, Vermont. And I still have the brooch. I didn't bring it because mm -hmm. I don't think it's like a trinket or a token, mm -hmm. but um, I just, I have a place and that's where it is at my home. And it's always mm -hmm. been with me. And uh, separately, I had a ghost in a different home that I lived at when this happened while I was on vacation mm -hmm. that I had had a very bad ghost experience with like two weeks before my trip. And after I brought this home, not, not connecting the dots, not having any thoughts on it, that never happened again. Like I never had any ill experiences in that same house. So anyways, I brought it home. I still have it with me. And I just think that she feels safe with me and she likes to be talked about. I myself have lost a child. And so I think that maybe she knew. Mm -hmm. yeah, so thank you. Sorry. Thank and you. And you have the photo. Oh, yes. this is, we have evidence. And then I <laughs> telling your story, I jumped because the light. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the lights are just on the timer. <laughs> so we can pass this around. I was a pop socket if that makes I, it unfortunately, easier. Unfortunately, I can't In the say upstairs that window. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, how cool. Oh, I'm going to share that story. story. Um, before you oh, go, yeah. Phyllis, was there anything In else? The upstairs I mean, that, that's she's like, literally like, good. Okay. That is a per, like, that's not like. That's her face. Oh, like, she's looking at me. It's great. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh my god. Wow, how cool. Yeah. Wow, look at that. Mm -hmm. That looks like that's that very wow. cool. That is kind of above and beyond. Yeah, it's very it's the same, <laughs> like, and my husband was gonna come with me tonight, but he's not feeling well. So Hello. I was like, I'm I have I had to hear what you people have to say. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Share, like, yeah. this is my opportunity. Yeah. I love ghost oh, tours God. and haunting tours when I'm yes. when I'm traveling, and I think it's such an interesting way to get a little bit of history. So and uh, cool. but I will say the only one that ever really really scared me is that if you're ever in Niagara Falls, Ontario, it is the strangest <laughs> ghost walk. It is not in the popular parts of Niagara Falls. It is in like the wow. sketchy okay. like mafia run parts of Niagara Falls. It's so much fun. So do that. Yeah, it was so weird. Yeah, wow. yeah. Yeah. I wonder about how many yeah. people have yeah. gotten yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Anybody yeah. with. I don't try to, it just happens. Yeah. Um, that's the same I, with me. I don't call it to me, it just, just happens. Comes. Thank no, you, Phyllis. I'm curious about your stories. Yeah. Wow. Um, so uh, we just had a question. That, has anybody taken photos and had orbs or other sort of mysterious auras or things like that appear? Yeah, that's that's interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah, you have, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. So does anybody have a like a, a local story, a Waterbury story, or? Um... I can do one from the radio ooh. station. Oh, ooh, this is fantastic. So I work on Stowe Street. And we've always had this sort of running joke about, well, if you see pink eyes in the basement, you know, it's either the rats or <laughs> it might be Rusty or Lloyd down there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and over the years, and I've been there 40 years, over the wow, years, yeah, yeah. people come and go, stop it. And they're like, you know, I hear stuff when I'm here by myself. And we always joke, oh, that's Rusty or Lloyd. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I've had a few instances where I'm in there either late at night, early in the morning, I'm by myself, or there might be somebody on the third floor, I'm on the first floor, and you'll hear steps going up the stairs. I turn on my monitor, note the guy's on the air so it's not him walking through the hallway. I go up, look down up the hallway, nope, nobody's around, but there's something there that walks up and down the steps. And about five years ago, I walk into the office early in the morning at 6.30, I'm there before anybody else is in the office. I punch in 
and I hear and feel something in my ear, like a man or a woman has gone. Oh, that's chilling. And I just put my time <laughs> card down and I turn around and there's nobody there, but somebody. Now, with that said, Rusty Parker did have his fatal heart attack on the air. He didn't die in the building, mm -hmm. but his heart attack was mm -hmm. there. So we always jokingly say, it's Rusty or Lloyd, and they're <laughs> just hanging out with us. <laughs> so I go in in the morning, fix my tea, and I'm always like, hey, Rusty, I'm just here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's never that. been anything That's malicious right. or nefarious. Mm -hmm. It's just, there's something in that building. My, and my understanding of Rusty is that that was his passion. That was of his course, passion, of yeah. he would stay with right. Him, right? Yeah. So we yeah. just always sort of accept it. And when somebody new comes in and they're like, yeah, I was here late at night. Oh, that's just Rusty. He's with you. <laughs> Don't worry that's, about that's it. That's a great story. Yeah. I always think I, I wear these keys around my neck in the, in the library so that I can open doors and they, they jingle. When I die, you're gonna hear that jingling <laughs> the library, and that's how you'll know I'm still here. <laughs> that's a great story. <laughs> uh, but that's thank you for sharing. Yeah, I will say I have been in that building. It is a weird it's building. It's a weird <laughs> yeah. building. Narrow yep. staircases. Very narrow. Multiple two passages. floors, but there's a mezzanine, and it's just. It's very strange. It's, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's kind of cool. It is kind of cool. cool. Yeah. It's a cool building. Yeah. It's neat. Because they don't make them like that anymore. No, they don't. No. <laughs> it's easy to get turned around because, like, you're wait, I'm on the mat. Where am I? Which yeah. staircase do I go up or down? So it's, yeah. it's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. I love hearing Maybe water berry stories. That's, that's never been. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anytime. Judy, I have to ask you worked in the old library. In the James no, house. actually, I did. Oh, you no, never worked I, in the James I, house. This was the library oh. store. Yeah. Do you know any stories of the James house? Like it feels What's like that? the James house is the, the historic building at the front of this building that used to house the library. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and it feels like it must have stories. Yeah. Have I well, I, the only thing I I would uh, take students up to the top floor and and supposedly teach them, <laughs> 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 but uh, uh, you know. <laughs> Don't don't have anything, no. but I I know there should be. You think there would be? Yeah, it no, because uh, that's that's definitely historic. I mean, so you guys probably know James um, Henry James uh, d dedicated the building or gave the building to the he gave, that was his home and you know preserved it for the library, the town of Waterbury. Mm -hmm. That the the the, the uh, whatever word I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, dedicated for for mm -hmm. the library so that it would um, mm -hmm. benefit uh, the town so that that's the, mm -hmm. the history there it's yeah. beautiful it's yeah. a beautiful building and now you can see it you can see the uh, the wood the, the mm -hmm. beautiful scroll work and upstairs if you haven't been it's the historical society mm -hmm. um, and so you can uh, you know, see some of Waterbury's history up there, which they do a great job mm -hmm. displaying. Is it so. open to the public? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and just call and find out when you can go, or just you know maybe drop in during the day. Yeah, yeah, and it's really lovely. They've done a yeah. beautiful job. Yeah. yeah, I can't imagine trying to operate a library. library. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> so small, but yeah, <laughs> stacks. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else have a story? I mean, I can tell not my own story. Mm -hmm. So I, the, asking friends like about their own personal ghost stories is like one of my favorite things to do when, you're, when there's a lag in conversation. Mm -hmm. And one of my closest friends, she uh, is from the Pacific Northwest. Feel free to embellish like some extra, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, it's foggy. I'm already It's foggy, it. you know, it's <laughs> drizzling yeah. out. Mm -hmm. And she's, I think, in college. And she went home to visit her parents and they had just bought an apple orchard. And her sister and her mother separately had seen a man in the apple orchard and they thought it was the neighbor. And he was, you know, dressed in overalls, the same shirt, hat. And they're like, oh, I saw the neighbor. And they described him and they're like, oh, I saw him too. We should introduce ourselves. And when they finally did talk to the neighbors, there was no man. And the neighbors talked about the people that, had previously lived there and the man had passed away mm -hmm. and 
the neighbor was talking about how she misses seeing him out in the apple orchard. And she started describing him. Mm -hmm. And both of them realized, wait, that, that's who we're seeing. And my friend, you know, she, she, that was her sister and her mother. One evening she was home again, she was in college. She was, you know, it was at night, they weren't home and she was working on her computer and the lights went out. Ooh. So she was like, Oh, that's weird. Like a, a, you know, the, um, a fuse must've blown or something. But then she walked over to just check the switch and she was able to turn the light switch back on, but it wasn't like a loose light switch. It was pretty stiff and moving. So she flipped it back on and thought, okay, that's weird. And then she goes back to what she's doing and then it happens again. And so she goes over and she turns the light switch back on. And then again, there's nobody there and she's starting to freak out a little bit. And then she's just, stop that. <laughs> and so she just talks to whatever is, you know, is, mm -hmm. she believes is causing this and it just doesn't happen again. Wow. That's fantastic. Somebody kind of take control. Yeah. yeah. So cool, right? yeah. So and I do believe her. She's not, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. no, because that's, I don't think spirits are like trying to Scared. like, in, instigate something mm -hmm. right you know I think they're just like don't different maybe when they passed right some different social norms whatever so it was probably they're messing with you. yeah they're, or it's like, like maybe their character or whatever it is right. so I'm here I'm here right yeah. like that's what it feels so like. I think that's really cool I don't know if I agree with you about that <laughs> okay so what's your theory well I don't mean to be morbid but I think there I think there's been two deaths in my house. The original owner and my husband. He passed on his of uh, he committed suicide. So I've gotten remarried and we've had a couple of instances where my second husband says to me one day, I've been pushed up the stairs and into the uh uh clock what's that big clock called grandfather, grandfather clock. clock he said i was pushed up the stairs into the grandfather clock i know i've been pushed out the door fell on my front and what i do and we always blame my first husband for it because he was a mm, and what i do is i go to the place where he shot himself and i say to him very calmly no you don't take it out on my husband. You don't take it out on my dog. If you're going to get mad, you can take it out on me, but stop it. And then everything quiets down for a few months. Wow, which is like human nature. Yeah. yeah. Really want to okay, so maybe I should have said one. it's not always. Maybe I should have specified I don't yeah. always because as I've said, I've had a really, a yeah. few really scary right. first experiences. But so. I just sort of yeah. think he's messing with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just as sort of a like, character, you know, as true to his character. Yeah, as true to his character. He's gonna be a dick. And I'm like, no, <laughs> stop that. So people don't change. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Even if yeah. you yeah. want yeah. on the other yeah. side. Yeah. Yeah. You you turn your character yeah. into that personality. That's was why I keep saying people tune you. into the negativity. Mm -hmm. It yeah. is there. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to look at your face because your voice I know so well. Yeah, you know from WGN. I do. Yeah. I, do. Yeah. I, I live at 12 Stowe Street across the street. Oh, so. okay. Okay. I probably see you You're where you should be. You yeah. have a great voice for it. But, uh, yeah. Well, Isn't it funny with the voice for, yeah. thing? Because people yeah. would yeah. hear your character voice, you know. Now, with that said about my husband, as I said, I think there's been two deaths in the house. Mm -hmm. Maybe the original owner. My husband comes out to me many years ago at about midnight. And he's, he comes into the bedroom. I'm sleeping. And he says, stop watching me in the kitchen. Whoa. I'm not watching you in the kitchen. <laughs> he says, yes, you are. You've been standing behind me watching me make my peanut butter crackers. <laughs> Dude, I just woke up when you came into the bedroom. <laughs> wow. I'm not out there. He says, well, there is an old woman in the kitchen watching me make Ooh. peanut butter crackers. And I said to him, 
Well, I haven't told you, but I've been hearing a woman singing in our bedroom for about a week now. Ooh, <laughs> and it's just this little soft hum. Wow. I assume maybe it was the original owner wow. that she's been in the house. Did that only happen for a certain period of time? Maybe a month. Interesting. Yeah, That's so sad. yeah he said, she, uh, uh, my wow. husband said that she watched him one night for quite a while, and then I heard singing probably on and off for about three weeks. Wow. How and it never happen? scared me or anything. Right. It's yeah. just like, okay, somebody's in the house with me. What's going on? Yeah. We yeah, had experience great. at WDEV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, whether you have, whether there are sightings or specific sounds or those kinds of um, concrete things, don't you feel that, well, all of us leave some sort of energy stamp mm -hmm. wherever Absolutely. we go? Absolutely. And when you go into places, you sense that. Mm -hmm. And this is not really a ghost story, and it's not really my story, but um, we, our last stop on the road was in uh, Southbury, Connecticut, and it was the home of the Southbury Training School, which is the place where Rain Man was filmed. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was, it, our property was adjacent to that. And it was a cradle to the grave um, place to put misfits, to put unacceptable, embarrassing mm -hmm. people who turned up in various families. And most of them belonged to celebrities from the New York area. Wow. Mm. Wow. And so by the time we lived, we came there, it was set up for, I think it was 2,000 people, and there were only a few hundred, like 400 by the time we were there. But they, and they left, they had these buildings that were in good shape, but they were vacant, and so they allowed them for various community things. And the high school used several of the buildings, the cottages, to, uh, for workspaces for making stuff for grad night and floats for parades and that kind of business. And honestly, when you would walk into that building, any of those buildings, they would almost hum at you. I mean, you, you could feel, you could feel energy in there. And um, it was the only life that many of these individuals knew, mm -hmm. and so I can't say that it was negative or positive, mm -hmm. but it was there for sure. And it was in every one of the buildings in different mm -hmm. ways. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. I love exploring old buildings. It's so interesting. Mm -hmm. Anyone have anything? I guess uh, I got more. I don't want to take over, but I can should fill I, up our time. I, should I do, I'll do the train? Yeah, okay, train I'll do a quick QR. one. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll stand up. For the, yeah, all right. So this one is definitely a... This is not my story. It's a friend's story, but I love this story. Um, so I, I, I was an archivist before I became a librarian. Well, I was a librarian, but I was an archivist for years. And one of my first gigs was I went to uh, Paul Smith's College. Does anyone know where Paul Smith's is? It's in the Adirondacks. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's near Saranac Lake, if you know Saranac Lake. So I was um, fresh out of library school, sent to Paul Smith's College to live for the summer to um, get their archives into shape. Uh, and um, so I was given an assistant. Yeah. <laughs> I was 22 myself and I was given an undergraduate to be my assistant. So I get this like super young kid, um, big fish fan, <laughs> but, like just like a very uh, kind of a bro kind of a kid. Really nice guy though and he helped me out a ton. And um, he grew up in the Adirondacks and knew the area really, really well. And so he had great stories about, about growing up in the Adirondacks. Um, and one of his best friends was a Kennedy. So, uh, no, a Rockefeller. That's what it was. A Rockefeller. So the Rockefellers own a ton of property in the Adirondacks, they, which is, has been good because they've actually preserved the, the property. But because he was a Rockefeller, he knew his way around all these um, pieces of property that were otherwise off limits, that were preserved by the family. So uh, one weekend, he, he's talking to my friend and he says, hey, uh, do you want to go camping and fishing this weekend on some of my family's property? Like, this is a pristine lake in the middle of nowhere. Nobody knows where it is. It's miles from anything. It's such a great place to camp and fish. And so he's like, my friend's like, yeah, of course, we're going to do this. It sounds great. So they, like, pack up all their stuff. They pack up their fishing gear. They pack up their camping gear. They drive down a million dirt roads in the middle of the woods. Then they get out, and they have to hike to the lake because there's no road that leads to the lake. So they have to haul their, like, 
lightweight canoe and, and their fishing gear to the, the campsite. And they're having a great, and by the time they get there, it's like dusk and they're having a great time. And of course they're drinking a few beers and like, you know, young men out in the woods having a good time. And um, so they're like, oh, okay, like let's do some night fishing because night, night fishing is the best fishing. We're going to have, we're going to catch some really good fish in this lake. So they, they get in their canoe and they like paddle out to the middle of the lake. It is pitch black the middle of the night, um, middle of nowhere, miles from Saranac Lake, miles from anything. They're on the lake and they start to hear this like rumbling noise coming at them. And they're like, what is that noise? There's nothing out here. It gets closer and closer. And then they hear a train whistle. <laughs> so they hear this rumbling. They hear like it's now distinctly the sound of a train on the lake with them. They hear a train whistle and they start to like get angst. They're like, what? This makes no sense. There is no train tracks here. This is the middle of nowhere and they're on a lake. <laughs> you know? So, um, so they start to like panic and they start to like paddle fast to get off the lake. And at that point they feel the whoosh, like, you know, if, if you're close to a train, you can yeah. feel it going past you. They feel the rumble of it. It shakes their canoe. The wind blows. They, they are like, it doesn't add up in any way historically as far as anybody knows there's never been a railroad track there but a train a ghost train went by them that night on this lake in the middle of nowhere in the Adirondacks and he was telling me this like dead serious like I have never seen this kid this serious as when he told this story he was like this really really happened I cannot explain it there's no history that explains it but it happened. <laughs> so I've always thought that was the best ghost story because an entire train being a ghost feels pretty intense to me. <laughs> so, yeah. And the Adirondacks are full of interesting stories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But do you want do something else you wanted to share? Yeah, I could tell the story of um, the scary ghost story I had before I took that trip. Mm -hmm. So I was a single mom. And I had a little baby boy, and I had been like, my whole life, I was like, I'm gonna buy a house before I'm 25. I'm gonna get my shit together. I was an addict when I was young, and so I got clean at 16, and just like, I had goals. That's what I was doing. And so I did. I bought this house in the hood of Sacramento, because that's where I could afford a house. And it had four bedrooms, and every single bedroom door used to have a deadbolt. Mm. Like when I bought the house and I looked at it, it was kind of like, obviously I'm just going to fix that, but like, what? So that's uncomfortable. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> the layout of the house, it was very like functional, like very boxy and very square. And uh, the way it laid out, like there was a big hallway right past the front door when you walk in and at the very end on the right was my bedroom. And so that's where we slept. And I probably was like maybe two weeks of living there. It wasn't that long. We hadn't unpacked, like it was just chaos. Nothing felt like we were at home, you know? And I'd been apartment hopping before that, so I didn't even really know what that felt like, but it wasn't comfortable, you know? And uh, my son at the time was like four and he had been with friends who I had recently been living with who like wanted to spend the night with him, they missed him. And so he wasn't there. And the person that I was with at the time, we were at the house laying in the bed, back right bedroom, and something just felt off. Like things were just like in the house, the energy, like so much energy. So we go out into the front living room area and the way the house is set up, like you walk up to the front door and it's kind of in an alcove. So there's like walls that are 10 feet long behind you and that's the living room right there. And that's the kitchen right there. And you walk down this to the front door. So like there's the hallway and there's that living room area. So we're in the living room at this point and our friends knock on the door. There's nowhere to get out of the door besides in the door or like you'd have, to, I'd see you out the window. Hmm. So I not even one second open the door and there's nobody there. Like my husband was peeking out the window, the doors open and we're like, you heard that? You, I heard that? That was real like weird. So then a few minutes later, they actually show up and we're like, no way, this didn't happen. Just things are weird. Like we don't really know what's going on and it's kind of hard to process that. Mm -hmm. And I'd never had such a visceral experience that was so like mm. happened and I could just not pretend it hadn't happened. And that night as we're laying in bed, 
I can't see the doorway to my son's room and we always shared a bedroom before this house. And so I can't see his doorway and I'm just like, this isn't right. Something's not right. The door's closed, this deadbolt, the it's weird. And I feel this spirit, this like evil, negative, very bad energy. I don't know what it was. Spirit literally go through my body, like through my heart, like right the center of my chest, you know? And I, it was, I couldn't breathe. It was like a physical feeling. And I just hopped up and ran right into my son's room and he was fine, perfectly sleeping, like none the wiser. And basically that night, I just continued to have experiences where I could feel this, I don't know still what to call them, but this, this thing that was happening. And it was very physical. And we had just closed on the house. We had this big vacation plan that we had spent a bunch of money on and we're like, we don't like this house. We don't want to live here. Like, this is so bad. <laughs> My best friend had just had a baby and she had heart complications and all this thing, these things were happening in life. And so we're just like, let's go on vacation and just like do that. And when we get back, we'll kind of figure out what we want to do and what's happening here. And so when we got back, I had that brooch and nothing ever, ever happened again at that house. Oh, we completely so cool. remodeled it. And when we sold it, it was like not even the same house wow. and we did it all ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it was just this, like, I, I don't know what it was, but something happened. Mm -hmm. And it was, I think that's so cool that you find this brooch and that's, your heart yeah. was so honest. You wanted to find who dropped it and the guide, like probably because he'd been doing this ghost walk and, you know, had seen and heard and experienced so many things. He, he knew whatever it was that there was a connection between you and that woman. And, and I'm not, how, how do I know? I wasn't there, but I just think it's so cool, whether it's a guardian spirit or just, um, I don't know. I just, even when you told the story, I felt like this woman in you, maybe she saw something in you that reminded her of herself at that age or maybe whatever I who knows yeah but it's you it's, know this, the guy did mention too he said like I can take it and turn it into the town hall kind of right, thing right. it's gonna sit there forever and just sit on the shelf oh, wow I, so that conversation yeah. happened yeah and I was like I, I and my husband was very he's always been very encouraging like he doesn't have many of these experiences on his own but in that time he was like this is telling you like take that and then to have that horrible such a like you said that visceral feeling about this spirit that isn't good and then the brooch whether it was the brooch or the woman's energy or whatever but to have that just dissipate yeah. and you yeah. told us the story in two different segments yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, that's wild wow. that's amazing. it's crazy to talk about because like you know sometimes people don't believe stuff right and like sometimes you just don't even want to bring it up because you're just like what are they going to think or what's mm -hmm. the point or this person doesn't even deserve to learn about this like mm -hmm. special being that okay. i this, that's why this we had so much fun doing this last year it's fun to have a room full of people who whether they're believers or not, are very open and very willing to share and are curious, which I think is really critical. So, anybody else? We've got a couple <laughs> folks who haven't spoken. I don't know if you want to, if you want an opportunity to speak or if you. Well, I, I wanted to. I started writing a story for this event, but I didn't get it done. But uh, uh, my goal will be to <laughs> have it done before next time, oh. next year's event. But, um, so it's basically um, about this girl that um, her dog goes missing from her front lawn. Um, and as she's searching for the dog and posting to the f front porch forums in every town, and this has taken on, like, for five years, she's been searching for her dog. But as she's doing that, she's noticing a pattern of other missing dogs mm. disappearing out of thin air in all the towns in Vermont. And so she starts tracking this information, and it's kind of like an obsession for her because um, she's been doing it for five years. And so, you know, she's got the, the wall board with the Vermont maps and she's 
using you know Red colored <laughs> yeah, <laughs> colored um, push pins to keep track of the missing dogs and where they are and she's she's collecting all this information over the last five years and like has determined that there's something possibly more sinister happening in Vermont um, because she's she's like tracking that um, you know over five years there's been like nine thousand dogs that have gone missing and so I so I'm developing that story mm -hmm. to share for next year um, but I do want to I, I did want to share this other um, real life story that happened to me that like because you all were sharing your stories I uh, I, it resonated with me, and, and so I was thinking about, like, if something had ever happened to me, and I mean, I guess things have happened to me over the years, but I just kind of pass it off as, like, not really anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but when I was um, 21, I, I moved um, to Highgate, Vermont. I don't know if you know where that is, but it's... Mm -hmm. It's up north, and I remember. Um, so I, uh, I had my own car, but I hadn't been driving for very long because I didn't get my first car until I was twenty, and so um, I remember going to Burlington and going out with friends, and I didn't really know the area of Highgate and St Albans, but so I was traveling back from Burlington. Um, back home to Highgate, and um, it was late. It was like one in the morning, so it was pitch dark. And I, again, I didn't, I wasn't familiar with the roads in Highgate mm -hmm. <laughs> because I'm, all, you know, not only had I never lived up there or really traveled that much out of my hometown because I had a new, you know, I was a new driver, um, but. Um, you know, so I'm kind of an inexperienced driver at that point. And so um, I'm driving home and then, um, and there's no other cars on, on the road because it's one in the morning. And, and all of a sudden, like, I'm not really paying attention because I'm tired, but um, I hear this voice to the right of me and, coming from the passenger side of my car and and it said and it was a man's voice a, a deep voice and he said slow down and I just kind of like I wasn't really paying attention and and then I am like driving 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 and and he's like you're gonna need to slow down and I again I'm young I didn't really think much of it and then he yelled, slow down! <laughs> and, I, and I was like, okay! And I slammed on the brakes. <laughs> and, and just at that moment, I had gotten to a four-way intersection um, with stop signs, but like my, um, I didn't see the stop sign. And just as that happened, this truck just like, Wow. flew by me. He must have been going like 80 miles an hour and that was the first vehicle I had seen for like wow. probably uh, 30 minutes because I'm like traveling home and I just and like I mean I literally slammed on the brakes and <laughs> it was like somebody was there and they were like oh, wow. shouting at me but it was so real because it kind of startled me mm -hmm. um, to the point of like, I'm like, okay, and I slammed <laughs> on the brakes and like I jolted front, you know, I like came to a really quick, hard stop and that's when the truck like Oof. came in front of me and just was like wow. going, you know, 80 miles an hour and it scared me and I was like, oh my gosh. And then after that, like, of course I was like, why did we capture that? Mm -hmm. And then I proceeded to go home. Wow. Yeah. Um, that is a Has anyone story. heard of Mysterious Ways? Mysterious Ways? It, it's no. a bi-monthly publication by Guideposts. 
-hmm. What she just reported is what the stories are in guideposts. Mm -hmm. Hearing a voice next to you. And some say it's your guardian angel. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's Jesus Christ. I don't know. But your story is yeah. what I've read many times mm -hmm. in uh, Mysterious Ways. Mm -hmm. And that was so well told. Mm -hmm. like, yes. The energy. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. Really. Thank you for I'm so glad you chose to share it. <laughs> yeah. I still remember it because it was so real and like as if a like a human person was like physically in my car. Wow. Um Mm, Has anybody still, else ever been in the car that you've heard anyone else in the car with you? Um, you know, that kind of happens to me a lot. Oh. <laughs> um, like in the car and I mean, I have um, like things hanging from my my rear view mirror, yeah. um, you know, St. Christopher, like the is the symbol, the Catholic symbol for like protection, right. travel protection. Yeah. So I have that and it was weird how I came across that necklace like out of the blue kind of like I'd never seen it before but it was in my things so I thought it was cool so I hung it in my car mm -hmm. and um, I didn't know the symbol because I'm not Catholic um, I just thought it was a cool pendant um, or yeah pendant and so I after a while like stuff started happening in while I was driving, it's like somebody's in my car, like <laughs> giving me, <laughs> you know, <Driving> advice. <laughs> you listen now? That's fantastic. Yes, yeah, I absolutely listen. Mm. Um, whether it's like I'm lost, mm. um, I get that information. Like even when I have a GPS, and I'm like. I I just have somebody, except it's a woman and not a man, um, letting me know like what to do. And so I, I ninety nine percent of the time, like I I do follow that instead of like my GPS. Wow. Even though like you know, you're kind of trained to be like trusting of your electronics but I, but you know when they fail it's like Meh. yeah but yeah that's happened to me quite a bit in the car it's always your, in the car, car pre-owned no uh actually yes i'm sorry yes yes um because it was a it was like a dodge shadow it was my, the first car i'd ever purchased by myself and it was pre-owned um, yeah, the shadow. That's, that's a classic. I got a shadow. I love it. Yeah. Wow. This is this. Well, thank you for sharing, and I'm so excited that you're writing something. And that's another thing I did want to say is that I'm very open to fictional stories. And if we do this again next year, and I hope we will, um, please bring your writing as well. Um, I know that Judy runs the the Writers Free group, and. There's and some... Denise has been a part of that as well. Yeah. yeah. Meetings Marjorie about Saturday if you want yes. to come. Yeah. Yeah. Saturday. yeah. Uh, any any mm. last stories to kind of wrap up on? This has been such a blast. I'm so <laughs> glad that with a smaller group than last year, but really good stories and a really good um, lots of good sharing. I feel like it's been a very warm group and I, I really appreciate sharing and I'm going to make this an annual event, so look for it next year, um, always in December, because I think you have to do this at the darkest time of the year, when we're <laughs> reflecting on the, the year past. Um, and yeah, thank you for coming. If you didn't get a cookie, make sure you get a cookie. Um, did, did you say that traditionally ghost stories were told at this yeah, time? Yeah, it's a Victorian British tradition to tell ghost stories at Christmas, especially on Christmas Eve, as families gather together, sit around the fire and tell ghost stories. And well, and that's interesting because uh, obviously we all know Halloween all, and All Hallows Eve, and then the month of November, uh, mm -hmm. all the saints are uh, recognized mm -hmm. and so forth. And so maybe by December, the spirits have just gotten tired sitting around and not being able to do anything, <laughs> and so they're back at action yeah. again. And it's you know, it's such a dark time, and you mm -hmm. you come inside and you you gather with people and you and you tell stories, and uh, and I just I think that I'm trying to revive that tradition because I think it's so great, um, and yeah, I just I just love it. So yeah, so thank you all. This Ooh, was really great. Together.